All right, guys, so our goal today is to set up our journal papers, okay? This semester it will be required that you have a one inch border with a one inch segment separating your journals, okay? So you will have 20 journals due this semester uh, and they will each have a week for their assignment. So the one on the left is being assigned the week before the one on the right and their due dates are outlined in your class worksheet. All right, so when you start measuring, you're going to put zero on the edge of your paper and you're going to make a hatch mark at one, okay? You're going to move the ruler down somewhere near the bottom of the same side. You're again going to line up zero to the edge of your paper and you're going to make a hatch mark at one. These hatch marks should go in the direction that you plan to draw the line, okay? So you always want to do this with a really sharp pencil perhaps a mechanical pencil would be a good choice in this case you're going to place your pencil lead on the mark that's furthest away from you get your straight edge or ruler and you're going to drag it over till it touches the lead and then you're going to take a look at this bottom mark line it up perfectly and very lightly continue the line through that mark okay so we don't want this line to be really dark because we may need to erase it so it doesn't interfere with our drawing later. When we get one line drawn, we're going to repeat that for the other three sides. We're going to rotate the paper. We're going to put zero on the edge. We're going to make a hatch mark at one. We're going to do the same thing that we did before, placing our ruler near the bottom of the page. Put zero on the left edge and make a hatch mark at one. We'll put our pencil on the mark furthest away from us. Line up our ruler to both marks and lightly drag. Okay. You come up with these hatched corners. Later on we're going to be erasing those extended marks. So we want to make sure that we're drawing uh, light enough to where you can't see that we overdrew our mark. Okay. But we'll leave it for now and take care of it later. So we're going to rotate our paper, we're going to put zero on the left edge, make a hatch mark at one, and make a hatch mark at one. Okay, we'll put our pencil on the mark furthest away from us. We'll continue that line through the second mark until it intersects with the boundary line that we previously drew. Okay, we'll rotate the paper, put zero on the edge, and make a hatch mark at one. Do the same thing with our hatch mark. We'll put our pencil on the mark furthest from us. We'll continue that line. Okay. So I actually unintentionally made a little problem here. My line doesn't connect just perfectly. Okay, so I'll clean that up before going for further. And actually I separated these two lines. I imagine that could happen to you. So let me just redo it. Okay, instead of being uh, lazy, I'm just gonna redo it so that it looks nice. Okay, I'm gonna put zero and then I'll put one. And it looks like my mark here is in a good position. So I'll put my pencil on that mark and continue through. So they line up nice and even. Okay, so here's my little problem area. That line I didn't draw quite far enough the first time. So the best way you can fix that is put your pencil right on that line and line it up and just continue that through. Instead of trying to hand draw it, you want to make sure you line your ruler back up. Okay. So let's clean up the hatch marks on the corners with a, an eraser. In the, in the case of cleaning a paper, white erasers work the best, okay? So if all you have is a pink one, that's okay, but if you happen to have a white one, a white one is a good eraser for cleaning up. Whereas a kneadable eraser like this is a good one to help shade, okay? So erasers definitely do have different purposes and they are good drawing tools, okay? All right, so for the for the people that are really fast, the next step, you're going to measure in with two hatch marks four inches from your 
lines that you created on the boundaries. Okay, so we'll measure four inches in, four inches in, and we'll make the middle lines. All right, so for the rest of you, follow along. We're going to put zero on that border line that we created, and we'll measure in four inches. We'll put zero on the border line and measure in four inches. All right, so I will put my pencil on the mark furthest away, line it up to the hatch mark that's closest to me, and then I'll connect them. All right, so the way it looks right now, we have a small rectangle and we have a large rectangle, and we're almost to the position where we have the two rectangles that match and are the same size. So I can do this three or four different ways, okay? One way would be to just simply move my ruler across my paper and I could put four on the mark and make a mark at zero because that's still four inches of space no matter which direction I choose to use it. I also could have flipped it and I could have put zero on that border line with the ruler upside down and I could have put a hatch mark at four. Or if my brain doesn't like that because I'm drawing on the right side of my body, I can take my paper and I can flip it around and I can just do it from the left because a lot of, a lot of Americans are comfortable with working left to right, okay? Hopefully you guys will be able to work from any direction after you've been through at least uh, two years of this class, okay? Uh, we'll put our pencil on the mark furthest away from us and then we'll connect those lines all the way through, okay? So now we have two completely even rectangles and we have to erase the segments so that they look like they are framed pieces of artwork. For this semester, you are going to submit these journals with a vertical orientation. That means their long side is vertical and their short side is horizontal. Okay, this is different than our art assignment with the one inch border this semester. This has a horizontal orientation, meaning the long side is going horizontal. Okay, so I want you to get used to using those words in reference instead of hot dog and hamburger, all right? I'm gonna borrow somebody's name. Are any of you willing to loan me your name to sign? Jamie's hand went up first, I'll use her name. Of course, it's a really long name, thanks Jamie. Um, all right, so it's really important that you develop a signature. If you don't have a signature yet, one that's unique, definitely get one, okay? So I've never written Jamie's name in cursive that I recall, but I'm gonna start out J-A-M-I-E. Hopefully I can fit her last name here. V-I-L-L-A-L-O-B-O-S. I went a little too far, okay? My goal was to fit this before it gets to the right edge, okay? So hopefully, since your name belongs to you with practice, you will get really good at signing your name so that it fits. All right, I did it again. All right, I obviously need practice. So I, I want my goal is not to go beyond that right edge, all right? So the next thing that belongs in your title is the title of the work, okay? In this case, we have the title of chair for our very first journal of the semester. We're trying to write justify. Clearly, even I need practice. And then we put the date or the year, okay? So the the date for this for our journals we're just going to put 2021 if you want it to be why did i write chair you guys got to keep me honest i was supposed to put weeping willow i'm sorry okay so it's weeping willow what a good video all these mistakes um <laughs> weeping willow and then 2021 20, now you guys should know that the title is whatever you give it so if you're a student who chooses to do your journals um with your own interest so you want to do howling wolf or uh, everyday objects or whatever your title is it needs to be here okay all right so the next thing that belongs in the title for us is what what was it made out of okay what was it made out of so ours is graphite on paper usually 
So if you did graphite on paper, you're going to write this in print. And then if you should choose to do it in a different medium, since your parents bought you colored pencils, let's say that you're going to do a landscape with a weeping willow and you want to use colored pencils. Okay, So I will put colored pencil on paper. All right, so that's that. This is the requirement for your journal submissions for this semester, okay? Uh, they will not be accepted in any other format, so make sure that when you are turning in your journal submissions, this is the format, okay? So I don't wanna see them coming in like this, okay? They're, the expectation is a vertical composition with a signature, a printed title, a printed year and the medium that it was made out of. Alright, so I'm going to stop the recording and then you guys can ask me some questions.